everybody. My name is Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. I am going to do the final card in my Art of Stamping Fall series today. And I'm going to use a Christmas set. And part of the reason, it's um, more than one reason that I chose to use Mistletoe Magic to end my fall series. Even though there are some fall sets that I haven't hardly even touched. Um, and I may go back. I'm going to start Christmas after I do uh, this one, but I may go back and throw in a couple of fall ones here and there, but I want to get going on Christmas. And this set, if you are in my card club, will be our October um, set. But I wanted to show you that while it is Christmas, and I really wanted to use the Hollies, but they've been on back order for so long and I, I, they're not going to be back in stock in time for me to get them out for card club. So I had another quick look at the catalog and when I choose my stamp sets for card club one I do a variety of styles so um, last month we did ringed with nature which is kind of a fun cartoony ish style stamp set the week the month before we did the soft seedlings which you couldn't paint in so this one is a little bit different and I also love the words with this one it has a really good set of words and the dyes are fabulous but I it was October and I didn't want to go straight Christmas. So for a club, we probably will. And if you tune back in here in a couple of days, then I'll do a full video showing you what's in the club packet because today I'm just going to show you the stamp set. Um, I think it's a little bit of a sleeper set. I haven't seen a lot done with it anywhere and I haven't noticed that any of my people have ordered it. Um, so maybe I'll make you fall in love with it. So that's part of the reason I did this, um, today's card like this. The other reason is um, one of the perks of being in my card club is once every quarter, we I take the last three packets that they got and um, we zoom together and I do what's called a mashup. So I take the stamp set from June and I use it with the papers from July and the embellishments and ribbon for August. Not necessarily that way, but I mix them all up because I know everybody in Card Club has gotten those supplies, so they have it. So that's a little bit with Mistletoe Magic. If you are in Card Club, it's a little bit of a mashup because I still have this stuff laying on my desk from when we zoomed together this week. So I'm gonna show you, this is a little sneak um, of the mashup card. So this was textured chic with splendid day. Not all necessarily. This is soft seed leaves with textured chic. And then this is splendid day with the supplies that they got when we did the, um, whatever, uh, uh, I don't remember which month that was. Not rings of nature. That one's thrown me because they, we don't do the month we're in because they all have just gotten it. So I'm going to do mistletoe magic. I'm going to show you a couple of things. This is a little bit of a mashup because these are supplies that they have. And well, this is the same time they got the blue paper. Um, it was soft seedlings. So we used all these really pretty papers with soft seedlings. So if you're in club, you have these. And I wanted to use the dies. I'll show you in a second. Um, there's dies that cut the mistletoe. And I wanted them to be mostly green. So I cut this part and I got enough for two cards out of it. And then I wanted the berries to look more like fall berries, maybe um, bittersweet or something. So I cut the pieces out for the die out of more of this side. They have a little bit of the highlight and it looks really pretty. So I didn't use just straight of the Cajun craze. And this is paper that's, I think it's in the light to glow. Um, all of the supplies will be listed below. So I've got those, and then I'm gonna do the bow out of Distressed Gold, um, which was also in your packet that month. And then I have this laying here because I told you I was gonna use it. If you wanna see how I got this twine, you'll have to go back a video or two and, and see the twine. I think, I think it's the last video I posted. I'll have some of them pop up above the top. And then for the card base, I'm going to use Cajun Craze. And then I have, um, a, it's an odd size. It's four by five, five maybe. It's a little bit shorter. I wanted to see more of the Cajun craze. And then I have this piece here that we're going to make a flannel background. So let's get going. I'm going to do this part first because I want my ink to have time to dry. So here is our mistletoe that we are going to switch up. Oh, and I meant to get you, I did the same thing last year and I don't even, it's a carryover set with the one that matched the Christmas paper. And I did tons of fall cards with that. It's a beautiful way to switch it up because I don't know, I'm not like a, well, I do garden a lot, but you could show me some mistletoe leaves without the berries and I wouldn't know they're mistletoes <laughs> by the shape of the leaves. So if you give somebody a hand stamped card and it is 
maybe leaves that aren't the shape of I mean, we had bittersweet in our yard for a long time. I just know I had beautiful orange berries. And then we had to cut it down to put in our pool, which was almost a trade-off that I wasn't willing to make. So for colors on this, again, if these are colors that were sitting on my table after our mashup. So I have evening evergreen. I did add the mossy meadow, pumpkin pie, and Cajun craze. And I'm going to color them in with my Stella. So I'm going to use my mossy meadow to be kind of a highlight to kind of tone the colors from evergreen, which could be um, construed more to be mistletoe. And I'm going to add this little mossy meadow, which is to me more of a fall color. A little bit of a, sometimes you know when you stamp, you get those tiny little threads. And if you see them, you probably can't see it. It left a little bit of a ding, but they're just tiny little threads off of your ink pad. And if you paint those, then they've got ink stuck to them. So don't do that. So I'm going to use the mossy meadow and all I'm going to do with it is add a swish of color in the middle of these leaves. And that way it kind of lightens them up a little bit. Nothing super fancy, but these leaves all have a line on them. Oh, and I have soft suede sitting here somewhere. It's, it must be out of camera range. So I've got that. Let's do evening evergreen. This colors really quickly. And now with this, I'm gonna just kind of swish around the edges and then just over the top. Some of them will be much lighter evergreen because I'm gonna do it till my brush is, doesn't have ink on it anymore. Because the glimmer paper that we're using is evergreen. So that's how I based my colors for this. And it will be a lot darker, but I'm gonna use it for a highlight piece. So if you're interested in my card club, it's an online card club. It's a subscription, so you, it comes to you every month without you having to sign back up for it. And you don't have to get the stamp set, or you can purchase it as part of another order if you wanna get my host benefits for the month, or if you're ordering other things and wanna add it. But if you are in card, card club and you add the stamp set of the month, then I pay the shipping and handling and tax for you. So it's a little bit of a discount. And like I said, in a couple of days, I will do post the video that has everything else that comes in card club. I'm going to go back and just give some of these ones that are lighter just a little bit of a swoop on one side to get that evergreen in there. And it's so pretty when you color with Estella because it's nice and shimmery and it also gives them the leaves the same look as the green paper I'm going to use in a second. Now um, wipe this off. I'm going to go to the soft suede. And since I'm going to suede, it won't matter as much that I get all the ink off because if it has a little bit of green in it, that's okay. And then when I go from um, the soft suede to the Cajun, again, I, you just don't want to waste your Stella if you don't have to. And I want this to be light. I don't want it to be like, oh, there's a stem. So I'm just going to kind of brush that in there. bit of that off and then I'm going to do Cajun Craze which is darker and a lot of times I don't do the darker first but on this I want to hit the little little parts here that have the the shadow that's showing from the Stampin' Up! artist who designed it. That way I don't have to think about where I want the shadow to be because they already put the highlight on there for me. I'm just get a little bit of that off because it is a darker color. Now I'm going to go to Pumpkin Pie. And just kind of fill in the rest of it. Pumpkin pie is a great color. So actually orange and green are my favorite colors. And if you follow me, you know, we've had a little bit of a fridge saga 
has our 20, 23 year old fridge, 22 year old. I don't know how old it was. Um, the day that I was trying to get card club out this month, I went out, it's in the garage, but it's our second fridge and it was highly overpacked. If you have two fridges and then a, you know, a freezer, a spare one over time, it just becomes super full. Right. And it had like our extra half and half. So I went out there during the middle of packing up card club to find that it was no longer working. So we had lots of melted things, lots of, um, and you know, no room in the house to bring in all that stuff. So we did get a new fridge, but I didn't know if you haven't fridge shopped recently, you have to pick, you can pick colors. So it's currently um, the color of my kitchen and white, and then you get other panels to slide into it. So the ones that are coming are, are like, not 70s artichoke and not 70s orange, but more, much more of these colors because these are my colors. So when my fridge broke and we had to pick new colors, that means we have to redo the kitchen, right? <laughs> so in a uh, kitchen semi remodel, mostly just paint and some hardware, but who knew that your fridge could do that for you? Now to help this card even look a little bit more fall like, I'm going to make my some DIY flannel. I thought about using the paper that we have, which I don't see where I laid mine, the paper that we have that is the gingham, because it would kind of work, but this, the colors on this didn't really match. It was too large of a pattern, or too crisscrossy, I think. It wasn't the flannel feel I was going for. So this is a piece of shimmer white, and then I have used this in the art of stamping. I've used a couple of the stencils. So I'm going to put this on here, and I'm going to have it laid just so little bits of washi kind of hold it down because I don't it's early and I don't want to start with ink on my hands before the day has even begun so I'm going to start with um my Cajun craze and I just wanted to have that warm flannel feel I just bought it a new flannel because who doesn't love a good flannel if you live in the midwest and you know these days they're all kind of fancy so I'm not going to go everywhere with all the colors but with the Cajun craze I'm going to use my paper this way and kind of go up and then kind of just aim it. I'm gonna put this one so it's kind of hitting those right there, these down ones. And that's good, you don't have a lot of space. You wanna to try to keep it off the tape, otherwise it will give it a little bit of a line there. And I may not have done that when I was talking. And I'm gonna hit it with the pumpkin pie and just kind of go down next so it gives a little bit of a change of color right here next to it. So I've got that. Now we're gonna do the greens. So I'm gonna flip my paper this way and it's not really doing anything different because because the lines are the same, right? The stencil's the same, it didn't change. But it just gives me a focal point as I do this to kind of move it along these lines now instead of the other. So this is the Mossy Meadow. And again, I'm not gonna get everywhere. I'm just gonna kind of go up these. And they'll mix. And there's going to be ink on top of your stencil that just is there and there's nothing you can do about it. So it will, but you mix the greens and these oranges together and you kind of get soft suede. So it's not like we were really adding any color. I got that. And just a hint of evergreen. And it really does, see where these are hitting? Doesn't that look like soft suede? So it's not like I added another color of yucky. You know, sometimes when you mix colors, they are not the color that you wanted. They're just yucky. So again, I'm trying to go up on these. And so, you know, we're gonna put our mistletoe on top so it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm gonna get a little bit down here where you can kind of see that evergreen. That should be good. It's always a surprise when you use stencils masks <laughs> we call them masks and i call them stencils isn't that fun doesn't that want to make you go sit out by the um bonfire and roast a marshmallow the reason i did this before i did this was because i wanted that stella to have time to dry you don't want to use stella and then immediately put a plate on it because you know when you roll it through the cut emboss machine it is smashy and you don't want to smash your your beautiful stella right off so I have this plate in first. So I'm going to use the timber. This makes an appearance in the fall and kind of doesn't go away. And then I'm gonna take my Whisper White. Again, it was laying on the table because we used it in Card Club this month. And so because we used it in Card Club this month, I used it in the Zoom the other night. So 
I'm just gonna add some. I don't want it to look like it snowed because I'm not ready for snow, but I do want to give a little bit of highlight because you're not gonna see a lot of the timber once I lay the other stuff on here. So this will just kind of press into those um, grooves, the timber grooves and, grooves and just kind of highlight them. So roll this through. And you can see it just kind of makes them pop a little bit, gives it a little bit of a vintage. Now, if you wanted it to look like it had snow on it, put a whole lot of the white ink. I just wasn't going for that look just quite yet. Maybe when we do the mistletoe cards, but probably not in club. Because in my card club, you don't have to have a die cut machine because I know a lot of you don't. Um, so if anything's die cut on our projects, I was gonna say, I do it for you. Really, my husband does it for you. So here's the little bit of Cajun craze, and then here's all the berries. In our world, they're bittersweet, but they're really mistletoe berries. And then here's the distressed gold with the bow. And then here's the piece that I cut out. So some of the leaves will have gold on them and that's okay. So you can see I just cut around the part that I needed because that paper's beautiful and I can use all the little bits of it. So roll this through. It just takes one roll, one pass. And then this is why you always need lots of plates. I'm gonna leave all that there and grab another plate to cut this out. That way you don't have to move all of your things twice or you could cut it second, but mine were laying there. And then this is one that cuts out all these holes. I love when our dies do that. You know, sometimes they're just, they just cut the edges and I'm like, I'm a pretty good cutter. I could do that. But this gets those insides where it's virtually impossible to get without kind of poking and ruining your design. See what I mean? It pops out these centers and it's really hard to do that with your snips. So now we just have to put this together. We have our Cajun craze. And then let's add. And the reason I cut this shorter was I really wanted that Cajun craze to help pop those berries. So that's cut a little bit shorter. Now, if you're using seal, and you're using something that's gone through the embossing folder, it's always better to do it on the not embossed side. Because sometimes it will, the paper has a little bit of a texture to it and it can kind of pull it out. So we have that. Now let's add this and I'm gonna go down just a fraction. So it's not gonna be centered and decide, I like this one. This one has much more of that, that just has, that. so you'll see more of this at the bottom. And see where it hit right here? Doesn't that look like soft suede? And then I'm going to use, this is in our Halloween, um, on the Halloween pages of the catalog, and it is glimmer tape, washi tape. I'm just gonna add some on here just to give it, again, a little bit more pop of that orange. So nobody's mistaken that this is any kind of a um, mistletoe. This, now these do take a second to pop out anytime you have them on the glimmery type of paper because it's kind of, well, it's got a texture to it and it's definitely cut and you saw I did the one pass, but I didn't want you to think if you get this and your things aren't popping out, I didn't want to do the magic of TV for this, which sometimes I do because you know the things out of the paper pop out, but I wanted you to see that you just have to kind of pull these out. And it's just, this paper has cardstock and then it's got that glimmer coating and it's the glimmer coating that makes it hold in here. And this one's a little bit like the operation game because it got those little pieces up in the top and you don't want to rip your leaves off. So just take a second. There we go. 
and I want this. You could you could do two of them. And here was my dilemma. If it didn't use beautiful paper and the next one was gonna be so much more gold, I would have just cut two and let there be two of these back here. But we also have scissors, right? So we can change things. So I'm gonna take right between these two leaves right here and I'm just gonna trim it. It's probably hard for you to see it because the leaves I'm sure aren't showing up well on camera. Just like that. Now I have two pieces. And take this. They're two pieces, but the tops of both of my pieces are not pretty. So you just want to make sure that you hide those pieces behind here. So I want this to go this way. So see right here where I cut? Not pretty. But I want to make sure that I'm just going to tape it right here. So just flip it over. Add your tape. And then if any of that stem sticks out that I don't really like, I'll just snip that off as well. And this is seal plus, so I can tack it up there and then see, make sure it's not gonna go off my card. That looks pretty good. And then do the same thing over here. And it just, then I haven't had to use more of my glimmer paper than I wanted. When these cut, it's hard to see. You'll, I'll do something on my next video where you see it better. It does cut and emboss. It has little raised up parts in the, this further down here. in the design. And again, before you have it on, make sure all the things are gonna work and that's pretty good. Now I'm just gonna go ahead. No, nope, I'm not. <laughs> I was like, what did I do? It's been a day since I made this card. So this is the twine that in one of my previous fall videos I have unraveled. And on that one, I used the silver. So there's no silver left. And I just have this twine and I did tell you in that video that I would use it. We used some in club. We used the frayed ribbon this time, and we were able to get three cards out of one cut of ribbon by different fraying techniques, just on the one piece of ribbon, which was kind of fun. Just gonna tie a knot, make it look like I've gathered my bittersweet to bring in the house, and now I can mount this on my card. I'm gonna make sure that all the pieces get some. stick this on here on my other one. I didn't like where this was, so I literally just cut this and moved part of it over because it's a little bit of a challenge to know before you put it on here where it's all going to go. And then I like wild ribbon. If you don't like wild ribbon, then you can trim this down a little bit. Now all we have left to do, I didn't put any embellishments on this card because these are going to be our embellishments. So we have our bow and I'm going to use green glue. Add some there and then you'll be able to see when you have the die that all those berries that we cut out have a place to go on here. So I'm just going to go ahead and add my glue. And then we will put a, uh, there's one there. This time I put this one a little bit lower because when I did the first card and I hadn't done the die really worked with it, I didn't know I was going to lose all of those berries. So just put this here. This is a little tall, and once it sets a second, I'm gonna smash that down. I start with my largest berries, and this is why I like to just kind of leave them here on this plate so they don't get lost, because there's a lot of berries, and you can see the little ones are still in here. Let's see if I can do it with my fingers. I have my tweezers, and I have my take your pick with the sticky end, which wasn't really working great because it got a tiny bit of glue on it. And then, you know, this glue sticks like the Dickens. We'll see if I can do better with it this time. Just add those on. There's those ones. Now I'm gonna move to these, which all stayed. How weird is that? These all stayed in the paper. Those all popped out and those are stayed in the dies. So each size just did its own thing. Same pass, same place on the little tray. So we can give you lots of tips and then sometimes it just does what it wants to do. Let's grab these. It's working better because there's no glue, but you know this green glue gets on something and it's there. And you want them to be all the different sizes.
Now imagine if you were doing this and you want it to be a winter card or a Christmas card, you just switch the colors and these are red berries and you just do your flannels and colors of Christmas, whichever colors of those you want to pick. You could almost even do it as a spring card and do them as flower buds. Because when you're, when you're controlling the colors, then you can make it be whatever you want. Oh, well, I got that far without getting any glue on the end of my That looks like I've got them all. So here's this one. And then you just want to take your, what am I going to use? Let's use this because I can wipe it off the best. Kind of smash that down and that will hold your bow on. And then if you want to trim those down, you can. I'll show you my dry one. This one you can see I did it a little bit higher so I was able to get that out. I like this flannel a little bit better because once I really knew what I was doing, it's easier to do the second time. Um, but I didn't want to waste my shimmery white paper. And I was also running out of time last night. I was trying to get this filmed yesterday. That didn't happen. So I don't even know. This is my finished one. I don't want to knock any of that stuff off. So with the shimmer paper, with this really pretty evergreen, and then the Cajun craze, and then that just that little tad of the um washi tape i felt like i thought about putting pearls on it because they got pearls last month in card club the iridescent pearls but i really didn't want to detract from it there's a lot going on but it still it just feels like a little bit of hot apple cider wrapped up in a flannel shirt sitting out by the fire doesn't it so if you're interested in card club come back when i do the actual this is what you get in october card club video um, and show you the first project for that but here's a way that you can take a christmas set and just totally mix it up i'll catch you back here later bye